Here on this small island, the population that remains earn their livelihoods from the sea, as they have for generations. But the rocky patch of earth that they call home, fronted on all sides by an emerald green sea, is changing. And the fate of the old ways of life here in China's easternmost archipelago, the Dongji Islands, is the subject of this week's Explore Zhejiang. The Dongji Archipelago is located at roughly 30 degrees north, 122 degrees east. These are the easternmost inhabited islands of China. Dongfu Mountain is the smallest island among the Dongji Islands. It is only 12 nautical miles away from international waters and a full three-hour steam from the fishing port of Shenjaman on Joshan Island. According to legend, about 2,000 years ago, in the Qin Dynasty, Emperor Qin Shi Huang ordered Xu Fu to carry 3,000 boys and girls to Dongji and there seek out the elixir of immortality. Whether myth or not, as recently as 400 years ago, Dongfu Mountain was still uninhabited. Dongfu Island is located in the Zhoushan fishing grounds, and her local waters are rich in cuttlefish, large yellow croaker, and small yellow croaker. Since the 17th century at least, in the early years of the Ming Dynasty, fishermen began making permanent settlements on Dongfu Mountain. But much has changed in four centuries. Today is the beginning of the mid-autumn festival. Wang Guofang came to the pier early in the morning. Guofang is one of the few fishermen who still inhabit Dongfu Mountain year-round. In recent years, many fishermen here left Dongfu for the cities of Zhoushan Island, cities like Shenjaman and Dinghai. But if the number of resident fishermen is in decline, the number of visitors is growing. <laughs> Eight years ago, Wang Guofang opened the island's first hotel. It is named simply Dongfu Hotel. He is at the dock this morning to welcome his guests. Uh, <laughs> The Dongfu Hotel is near the water's edge and not far from the dock. It was formerly the public health center, and its location appealed strongly to Wang, who now leases it. Wang's wife is a good cook, and not surprisingly, fish and seafood are her specialty. All of the fish on Wen Guofang's hotel table were caught by his son-in-law. The view, the fresh fish, and the authentic home-style cooking, there's no wondering why the Dongfu Hotel is so popular. Wang Guofang has two daughters. The first daughter is married, and her husband is a local fisherman, the only young man among all the fishermen in Dongfu. The younger daughter found a job in Shenjaman after graduating from high school. Her outlook differs from that of her sister. 
我姐姐找了一个渔民，好了嘛，我就不想找渔民了。啊，我家里到了啊！啊。Wang's hotel now has 40 beds. It's not a large-scale operation, but it's big enough and busy. Today, he is receiving over 70 guests from Shanghai and Anhui province. In the first few months of operation, Wang said, few visitors came to Dongfu Mountain. Business was slow and the future of his hotel uncertain. But in recent years, the number of visitors to Dongfu has grown. Occupancy at the holidays is high, and Wang accommodates more than 1,000 visitors every year. During the peak tourist seasons, he's fully booked, as indeed he is right now. And so today, Wang will arrange accommodation for his extra guests in the homes of other fishermen. During the fishing season, roughly 100 people stay on at Dongfu Mountain. At season's end, the resident population drops to 20. Most of them are the community's elders. This is Madame Xu, Guofang's mother-in-law. Madame Xu is 74 years old. She has four daughters and one son. Accepting one daughter, Guofang's wife, Madame Xu's children have all moved to Shenjiamen. Today's Dongfu Mountain isn't the Dongfu that Madame Xu remembers. With such a tiny resident population, there's no longer a market, and Life on this rock in the ocean can be inconvenient. Madame Xu's children hope that she would join them in Sanjamen. But she's been to Sanjamen, she said, and for her, only Dongfu Mountain could be home. It seems, in fact, that Madame Xu is not accustomed to city living, period. There, she said, she misses Dongfu Mountain and the old house where she has lived for more than 50 years. The elderly who remain here on Dongfu Mountain have their reasons for doing so. But whatever those reasons are, one thing is the same. Dongfu is their home. The desolate island is now anything but desolate and is increasingly enlivened by the steadily growing number of visitors. For Guofang and his wife, this swell in tourism means steady regular income and a chance for them to change their lives. For the seniors here, more visitors means more opportunities to meet more people. At the peak tourist season, Dongfu Hotel boards scores of guests, and even old Madame Xu pitches in. Madame Xu says the brisk business makes her happy. That, though, doesn't mean that the island's elderly are entirely worry-free. <laughs> Night falls. Wang Guofang's family is happy. There is laughter and joy. Oh 
The visitors are enjoying their final night at the hotel. Time passes quickly, and soon it is sunrise again, and a new day. Wang's guests leave Dongfu Mountain for home. Our crew has time yet for a few questions, and the main one is, what brought them here? A beautiful blue sky arching above it and an emerald green sea around it. Raw, unspoilt nature and simple people who still maintain the custom of not locking their doors at night. The sun shines brightly upon the East Sea, and Mr. Wang's guests board their ship. The guests are beginning their long trip back to Shenjiamen and thence home. Wang Guofang will be busy today. A group from Shanghai is expected and there's lots yet to do. Mr. Wang says that Dongfu's peak season is summer although long national holidays are busy too. In the winter, few if any outsiders make their way to the Dongji archipelago, and Mr. Wang and his wife will spend most of the season with their daughter in Shenjiamen. Shenjiamen is perhaps the most famous fishing port in all of China. Its waterfront is, in any case, home to the largest commercial fishing fleet in the nation. Many fishermen from Dongfu Mountain and Zhou Shan's other small islands have settled in and around Shenjiamen, and many of the remote islands of the sprawling Zhou Shan archipelago have little by little become uninhabited. Mr. Wang's family now have a house in Shenjiamen. Currently, they rent it out and plan to live there when they are old. Unlike Madame Xu, they anticipate one day enjoying the convenience of life here in Shenjiamen. This winter, Mr. Wang plans to have his hotel redecorated. He says that running a hotel is more profitable than fishing, and his hope currently is to earn more money so as to better enjoy his old age. After our crew left Dongfu Mountain, old Madame Xu telephoned to tell us that her son bought a small apartment for her in Shenjiamen. She will move there soon. For most people, in and outside China alike, the Dongji Islands are still something of a mystery a place known only by name and through legend. For the family of Wang Guofang and the other residents of Dongfu Mountain, it is forever their home.